Chapters 8 through 11 of the Book of Luke from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew Coleman. The Book of Luke from the World English Bible. Chapters 8 through 11. Chapter 8. It happened soon afterwards that he went about through cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. With him were the twelve, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Cusas, Herod's steward, Susanna, and many others, who served them from their possessions. When a great multitude came together, and people from every city were coming to him, he spoke by a parable. The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell along the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky devoured it. Other seed fell on the rock, and as soon as it grew, it withered away, because it had no moisture. Other fell amid the thorns, and the thorns grew with it, and choked it. Other fell into the good ground, and grew, and brought forth fruit one hundred times. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, What does this parable mean? He said, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those along the road are those who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are they who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but these have no root, who believe for a while, then fall away in time of temptation. That which fell among the thorns, these are those who have heard, and as they go on their way, they are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. That in the good ground, these are such as in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, hold it tightly, and bring forth fruit with patience. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a container, or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand, that those who enter in may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, nor anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Be careful, therefore, how you hear. For whoever has, to him will be given, and whoever doesn't have, from him will be taken away even that which he thinks he has. His mother and brothers came to him, and they could not come near him for the crowd. It was told him by some saying, Your mother and your brothers stand outside desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Now it happened on one of those days that he entered into a boat, himself and his disciples, and he said to them, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. A windstorm came down on the lake, and they were taking on dangerous amounts of water. They came to him, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are dying! He awoke, and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and it was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? Being afraid, they marvelled, saying one to another, Who is this, then, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, 
which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man out of the city who had demons for a long time met him. He wore no clothes, and didn't live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, you son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torment me. For Jesus was commanding the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For the unclean spirit had often seized the man. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and fetters. Breaking the bands apart, he was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered into him. They begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now there was there a herd of many pigs feeding on the mountain, and they begged him that he would allow them to enter into those. He allowed them. The demons came out from the man and entered into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. People went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who saw it told them how he who had been possessed by demons was healed. All the people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were very much afraid. He entered into the boat and returned, but the man from whom the demons had gone out begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your house and declare what great things God has done for you. He went his way, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. It happened, when Jesus returned, that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come into his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes pressed against him. A woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her living on physicians, and could not be healed by any, came behind him, and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately the flow of her blood stopped. Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes press and jostle you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I perceived that power has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, declared to him, in the presence of all the people, the reason why she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. He said to her, Daughter, cheer up. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he still spoke, one from the ruler of the synagogue's house came, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher. But Jesus, hearing it, answered him, don't be afraid, only believe, and she will be healed. When he came to the house, he didn't allow anyone to enter in, except Peter, John, James, the father of the child, and her mother. All were weeping and mourning her. But he said, don't weep, she isn't dead, but sleeping. They were ridiculing him, knowing that she was dead, but he put them all outside, and taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. Her spirit returned, and she rose up immediately. 
he commanded that something be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he commanded them to tell no one what had been done. Chapter 9 He called the twelve together, and gave them power and authority over all demons, and to cure diseases. He sent them forth to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staffs, nor wallet, nor bread, nor money, neither have two coats apiece. Into whatever house you enter, stay there, and depart from there. As many as don't receive you, when you depart from that city, shake off even the dust from your feet, for a testimony against them. They departed, and went throughout the villages, preaching the good news, and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, and he was very perplexed, because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this? about whom I hear such things. He sought to see him. The apostles, when they had returned, told him what things they had done. He took them, and withdrew apart to a deserted place of a city called Bethsaida. But the multitudes, perceiving it, followed him. He welcomed them, and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and he cured those who needed healing. The day began to wear away, and the twelve came, and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding villages and farms, and lodge, and get food, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we should go and buy food for all these people. For they were about five thousand men. He said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about fifty each. They did so, and made them all sit down. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to the sky, he blessed them, and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. They ate, and were all filled they gathered up twelve baskets of broken pieces that were left over. It happened, as he was praying alone, that the disciples were with him, and he asked them, Who do the multitudes say that I am? They answered, John the baptizer, but others say Elijah, and others that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Christ of God. But he warned them, and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and the third day be raised up. He said to all, If any one desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his own self. For whoever will be ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there are some of those who stand here who will in no way taste of death until they see the kingdom of God. It happened about eight days after these sayings that he took with him Peter 
John and James, and went up onto the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became white and dazzling. Behold, two men were talking with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory, and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter, and those who were with him, were heavy with sleep. But when they were fully awake, they saw his glory, and the two men who stood with him. It happened, as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let's make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he said these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered into the cloud. A voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. When the voice came, Jesus was found alone. They were silent, and told no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. It happened on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, that a great multitude met him. Behold, a man from the crowd called out, saying, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. Behold, a spirit takes him, he suddenly cries out, and it convulses him, so that he foams, and it hardly departs from him, bruising him severely. I begged your disciples to cast it out and they couldn't. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him violently. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. They were all astonished at the majesty of God. But while all were marvelling at all the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears, for the Son of Man will be delivered up into the hands of men. But they didn't understand this saying. It was concealed from them, that they should not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this saying. There arose an argument among them about which of them was the greatest. Jesus, perceiving the reasoning of their hearts, took a little child and set him by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For whoever is least among you all, this one will be great. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, because he doesn't follow with us. Jesus said to him, Don't forbid him, for he who is not against us is for us. He came to pass, when the days were near that he should be taken up, he intently set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face. They went and entered into a village of the Samaritans, so as to prepare for him. They didn't receive him, because he was travelling with his face set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the sky and destroy them, just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them. You don't know of what kind of spirit you are. For the Son of Man didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. They went to another village. As they went on the way, a certain man said to him, I want to follow you wherever you go, Lord. Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another, Follow me. But he said, 
Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but you go and announce the kingdom of God. Another also said, I want to follow you, Lord, but first allow me to bid farewell to those who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plough and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Chapter 10 Now after these things, the Lord also appointed seventy others, and sent them two by two ahead of him into every city and place where he was about to come. Then he said to them, The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that he may send out labourers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, nor wallet, nor sandals. Greet no one on the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking the things they give, for the labourer is worthy of his wages. Don't go from house to house. Into whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat the things that are set before you. Heal the sick who are therein, and tell them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But into whatever city you enter, and they don't receive you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust from your city that clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near to you. I tell you, it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. You, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Whoever listens to you, listens to me, and whoever rejects you, rejects me. Whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I saw Satan having fallen like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will in any way hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for so it was well-pleasing in your sight. Turning to the disciples, he said, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and he to whomever the Son desires to reveal him. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see the things which you see, and didn't see them, and to hear the things which you hear, and didn't hear them. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, 
what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, Who is my neighbour? Jesus answered, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who both stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he travelled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion, came to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the host, and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will repay you when I return. Now, which of these three do you think seem to be a neighbour to him who fell among the robbers? He said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. It happened as they went on their way, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet, and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she came up to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to serve alone? Ask her therefore to help me. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Chapter 11 It happened that when he finished praying in a certain place, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He said to them, Which of you, if you go to a friend at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within will answer and say, Don't bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, although he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as many as he needs. I tell you, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he won't give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? 
If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He was casting out a demon, and it was mute. It happened, when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the multitudes marvelled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. Others, testing him, sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. But if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore will they be your judges. But if I, by the finger of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When the strong man, fully armed, guards his own dwelling, his goods are safe. But when someone stronger attacks him and overcomes him, he takes from him his whole armour in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He that is not with me is against me. He who doesn't gather with me scatters. The unclean spirit, when he has gone out of the man, passes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will turn back to my house from which I came out. When he returns, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. It came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, On the contrary, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. When the multitudes were gathering together to him, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks after a sign. No sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For even as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation, and will condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation, and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, one greater than Jonah is here. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore see whether the light that is in you isn't darkness. If, therefore, your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly full of light, as when the lamp with its bright shining gives you light. Now as he spoke, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. He went in and sat at the table. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed himself before dinner. The Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inward part 
is full of extortion and wickedness. You foolish ones, didn't he who made the outside make the inside also? But give for gifts to the needy those things which are within, and behold, all things will be clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees! For you tithe mint and rue and every herb, but you bypass justice and the love of God. You ought to have done these, and not to have left the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues, and the greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like hidden graves, and the men who walk over them don't know it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this you insult us also. He said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load men with burdens that are difficult to carry, and you yourselves won't even lift one finger to help carry those burdens. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you testify, and consent to the works of your fathers. For they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you took away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. As he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be terribly angry, and to draw many things out of him, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say, that they might accuse him. End of chapters 8 through 11